can't carry you through. That is great, that is really great. Yes, right, now take no. 104. Hang on a second. There's a child. There's a child running. Here he comes. There's a child running. Be careful, child. Be careful. <laughs> Carry on. Welcome back. <laughs> We've got two cars to show you. This one is super, super important. This is one of the Group B legends, the Renault 5 Turbo 2. Not to be confused with the Renault 5 GT Turbo or the Renault 5 Turbo Gordini different cars altogether. This is uh, this is an iconic car. And we're going to compare it to something else, which you're going to see at the end of the video, which is equally as important for the motoring industry. Both to come out of the Renault stable, both amazing cars. So have a look, see what you reckon. Don't, you're not a mover. I am a mover. Mover and a shaker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're a mover and a shaker. Well, I was earlier yes. in that. I know. So anyway, so this is Andrew. Andrew's the owner Hi, of the uh, Renault 5 G. No, no. Renault 5 oh, Turbo 2. How dare yeah. you? We talked about this. We talked about this. You're like, you are the pain of death. Well, yeah. is, so this is a really important point. Is that there's three different cars mentioned there, and it's it's a Renault it's a Renault 5 Turbo 2, not yes. a GT Turbo, not a Renault 5 Gordini, Gordini Turbo. Turbo. They're no, all different, they're different cars. cars. Yeah, exactly. This so. Is this is very special because it's a mid-engined one which most people just lust after and they absolutely love but they don't yep. know what it's called Yep. and it's even more unobtainable. So and more unique, isn't indeed. it? Indeed. And we've got one. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Andrew, can you give us a quick walk around in the car? I'm going to ask yeah, some questions sure. while we're going, but yeah, of course, it's yeah. so different not only to a, turbo, a regular turbo 2, yes. it's had some alterations, yes, it has, but yes. there's, there's a few hundred in how many are in the world a couple of hundred something yeah there's probably a couple hundred left no one really knows because they were never properly imported into the uk so we can't really track them so mm. it's kind of based on what people know in the forums and mm. stuff like that and if i say a number i'm going to get it wrong so i won't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> approximation is yeah fine. yeah a couple hundred something like that in the left so. there's one question i haven't asked you and it's yes. these lights in yes. the front right so this whole front is not as it would have it's it's not standard. Right, okay. And that, and that leads us on to what happened to this car. Originally, when it was bought, it was bought by some eccentric millionaire who just threw a huge ton of money of it yeah. at it. We've estimated it's something like £100,000 worth in today's money. Yeah. But part of the work that he did was this full custom front bumper. Now, purists may hate it, but I actually quite like it because it gives that unique yeah. uh, appeal to the car. And I think it's, you know, it actually suits it. I it's mean, the rally lights, look, isn't it? They're really it's muscular like, yeah, yeah. and they're all nicely integrated. So I actually quite like that. Um, but it's got a lot more inside because the guy absolutely went to town. <laughs> he did. Shortly, he did. He shortly, shortly, went he did. a bit mad. He did. Show shortly after about... that, he went. He went bankrupt. You know, <laughs> yeah, which is probably no, no, no surprise, blaming. right? Yeah. You know, wheels. They're not factory, are they? They're These not. are aftermarket. They are two-piece wheels. Yes. Um, are. Which are actually, I think, really suit the car. They really they're do. There was a huge choice back in the day for what you could fit to these, yeah. and this is just one of those choices. Look at inside this thing. It's like. It's eight is bonkers. It's eight it is, is gone mad, and they put is. one of everything. The guy Thank modified you. it as well as fitting a sunroof. He actually cut a sunroof out of a turbo too. I know sacrilege, eh? Sacrilege. <laughs> it chrome absolute. on it. Sacri chrome. 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 Yeah. chrome, and it's electric as well. But you know what? <laughs> what nice. A bit and you open it on a summer's day, and it's lovely. And it's very neat as well. Yeah, because no air con. No, and no. it works. So in here, have a look inside here. It's Joe. It's got Wilton carpets from a Rolls Royce. It's got a Rolls Royce ashtray. Yeah. It's got. Um, you know, all that sort of stuff. And Under here? Yeah, go on, lift it. 
<laughs> it's a 1980s CRT TV, and it still works. <laughs> Colour TV. It still works, and for, it's got a CD and tape player. Unfortunately, those don't work, but you don't want to listen to those. You want to listen no, to the engine. No, put the TV on, isn't it? Yeah, put the TV on. Watch these senders. Yeah, but a CD player in a yes. car of this age is oh, quite something, isn't it? Mega money. Can you just imagine how much that was? And that's a top-notch one because it's a trio, which is Kenwood. The dashboard's been trimmed. Driving computer. There's even a radar um, detector down there for te checking when you're speeding, which of course you are going to be in this that car. is the 1980s it it's is. got a radar detector for people's bit i mean that just oh, didn't no. i mean you just don't do it i can't think of any no i can't think of anything that would exist in here although it's removed it never came to us with a car there was a vhs player in there and, <laughs> of course um, there was a i think there was a fax machine in it according to no yeah, there's a fax machine i think and there's yeah because that's why it's got two mobile phone aerials one for the phone and one for the oh, fax these. machine yeah <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> he went mad, didn't they? He went to town. But the, I think the important thing is that none of that detracts from the driving quality of the car. Yeah, it's yeah. Still I fun. mean, we drove it today and it was an absolute blast. And, you know, you can still have as much fun in it as you would with any turbo two. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's fine. Really okay. Can. Well, that's I mean, it's, <laughs> when you talk about new, unique, this is certainly, certainly something. I think when you look, as we were saying, last time we spoke about uh, the Porsche 911, we were saying about when you look in the rear view mirror and you can see the arches on the back of the yeah. Porsche 911, this is even more than that. Yeah, I think I can that. see down the line of the car, if you're looking at that rear view mirror, you're going to see a great vented arch coming out the side there. The tyres as well, the tyres are period to the era yeah, of the yes. car. Yes, they are. In the, all in the old vintage type lettering. Yeah, Michelin TB15 3262R15. None of this modern rubbish. <laughs> no. Have a look at this, right? So for someone yours and my size, right? Yeah. Six foot four. Look at the size of the cabin in there. When I get in it, I'm expecting my knees to be up. I think this is the indicator stalk and I should probably be able to operate that with my knee if I want to do that. Well, that's it. Yeah, unfortunately so, unfortunately so. But it is very, very unique. It makes a bit more power than the stand. So they've got a 1.6 turbo uh, engine. 1.4. 1.4 turbo engine. Yeah. Um, which was modified by yeah, Gordini, by, was it? Yeah, so Amadi Gordini, he was like the tuning guru of Renault at the time. Mm. Um, it was a, based on a design that he did many years ago yeah. with uh, hemispherical heads and um, you know, spark plugs in the middle and cross flow and all that kind of stuff. And then Renault Sport took that and developed it for the uh, for the for the turbo for the rally car. So, so it's yeah. like a hundred. They're 160, 160 horse out of the factory. 160. Yeah. And this is nearer 200. -ish. I reckon it's nearer 200. You could buy bolt-on kits. Yeah. So this one's got um, a custom intercooler. So I think it's got a 180 intercooler and a and a and there's a shim on the wastegate to mm. just give it a bit more boost than yeah. standard. So. 180-ish, who, who really knows, yeah. don't care. It's No, exactly, it doesn't really matter about that, does it? No. It's, it's, it's uniqueness and it's its heritage. Yeah, it I could talk, I mean, Andrew knows far more about it than I do, and <laughs> I could ask more questions. Um, and so there's so much more I want to know about it, but what I actually want to do is drive it and I want to go out in it. So if, that's, if there's any more questions, ask us, in the YouTube below, because we can sure answer about them. Yeah, but and I'll watch that as well. Then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he'll watch it. <laughs> he will be able to tell you exactly about it. But what we're going to do is take it for a drive and see what it actually drives like. That's what we're looking forward to. So we'll just we'll just skate back a little bit. I mean, it's, what's what's brilliant is that you know so much about them because I was looking forward to, to, today to listen to. I don't know loads about them, and yeah. it's really interesting to speak to someone who hasn't got it just as a collector's piece, who actually enjoys driving it Absolutely. and is into it. You know, Absolutely. they're not they haven't got it just parked in a garage because it's going to accrue money somewhere. You know, yeah, they're exactly. actually, you know. Um, so the car was built originally because Renault wanted to enter the World Rally. Yes. And uh, was this a, did this go in as one of the Group B cars, or was that later than this? I get confused. I'm not exactly sure, but I, I think it was. I think it was a bit earlier than than Group B originally. Yeah. Um, they did the Tour de Course and the World Rally Championships and things like that. Whatever it was in those mid 1980s, I'm not really a rally buff, mm. so I don't know. But what I do know is they've won a load of. Uh, rallies with this thing so yeah. you know um jean ragnotti yeah i don't know if he's a, he's a famous uh, french rally driver and he well he won the i think the world rally championship in about 1986 right right um, in one of these 
and it was it was the dominant car at that time. Because uh, it, it had it has or had the perfect ingredients, didn't it? Yes. It was light and it had a powerful engine. It was mid engine. It was well balanced and everything Absolutely. else. Absolutely. Well, they had a the the the. They had um, lots of, uh, they had a Tour de Corse spec, yeah. which was about 300, 350 bhp. From the factory? Yes. Oh no, well, it would have been it, a, a, a... It was a Renault Sport rally car. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And then they had the, um, there you go, that's where you really see it, in that big range, right? So, um, then they had the, um, the Maxi, which was the ultimate evolution, and that was 400. But they... In something this size? Yeah, I know. But they, um, the, the standard engine is uh, like 1397 cc, which is tiny, yeah, it's I mean, tiny. But they they put bigger turbos on it, different. Uh, I think it was Kugel Fisher fuel injection, um, and oh no, I don't think it was Kugel Fisher. I think F F1 injection. I, I forget. Special fuel injection anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so they updated, it to, and they also increased the capacity. You can increase the capacity with a longer throw crankshaft. Crank, so, yeah, yeah. I've actually got one at home, but. Um, I, I don't really want to touch this, so I never fit it in. So, um, I'm trying to get some shots of the overrun because, um, you know, the overrun is really I cool. can't get over how good it sounds. No. And it feels very precise. It looks like it feels very precise. It's you don't seem to be like you know, seesawing with the steering wheel, you know. It's very easy to drive. And the other fact about this is, um, I think, was it the test Ross? I'm not hoping sure could generate about point, point 0.8 g or something like that okay. in a corner this can do point 0.87 so it's better than a ferrari of course. technically you can corner better yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and you know with 80s cars you get all the jokes about um, turbo lag being measured in aeons and things yeah, like that yeah and, yeah yeah this has got that but like, isn't that part of the it's part of the charm it's yeah. part of the charm it's the theater of the whole it of is. the car and and, and and what it represents it is it is but you know if you keep it on song it's flipping rapid you know it makes a great noise doesn't it it does it does you just wait till i get it on the overruns and things like that so i'm going to boot it now um i'm just waiting i'm not going to put back on the yet but then That goes a lot better than I thought. Yeah. Well, we're pushing around 200 brake horsepower, I reckon, but it's quite a heavy car compared to the standard Bordini. You know, it's a lot heavier. It's probably, yeah. about, it's probably about just about a ton, so, you know. Oh, man, that is... You're speechless, aren't you? Oh, I love it! <laughs> but, you know... I'm really pleasantly surprised with how lively it feels. I mean, I didn't get in it thinking it was going to be slow, obviously. No, but it's not going to be like a modern supercar, right? But yeah, but that's, yeah, it would be unfair to compare it to that, wouldn't it? But do you know what the other thing I love about it? The ride quality. Very good. You know, you really, really good. It's, you know, I'm comfortable. It's not jarry, it's not no, crashy, not at all. it's quiet, relatively speaking. And, you know, we're not being jiggled around like you're in something all. modern. No, Renault not at did, all. Renault did that really well, in my opinion. They, you know, they, Renault coined, they, they, they did nail a few things really well. And the fun right. factor yes. that Renault managed to implement with all of their hat, like fast hatchbacks is yes. exactly, is perfect in this. Yeah, and the quality. Oh, it sounds great, it doesn't does, it? It does. interesting actually if you um if you rev it up and drop the clutch it will bog down and it's not very good for the clutch so i'm not really going to do it but no it's don't go too bad it just absolutely bogs down yeah, and, yeah. Up, and then all of a sudden i mean you can hear it change <laughs> so and that's the turbo lag right but it will jump oh listen to that all like a train so that is the turbo lag right there
it's just it's so different. It it's is so it is, so it different. Is. So the the gears the gears yeah good idea to go through them. Yeah, let's just have a little bit of it. It feels it's only, very tight. It is very tight. Very I've only tight. just redone that. No wonder I, it I still a, feels so good. I had a problem with it when when we first got it, and it took me 20 years to get round to fixing I'm not, it. Oh right. <laughs> so, that's my biting point, right? Yeah. Okay. On my thousand pound clutch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't exactly ring euros, can you? And just no. uh, ring on. I have the last original clutch in the world. Really? In my house, yeah. So it's a thousand pounds I paid for it um, 20 years ago, and I still got it. And it is quite, even though the engine is behind us, it's a lot quieter than what I thought it was going to be. Obviously, you've got know. tailpipe noise, but you have, it's yeah. a lot quieter than what I thought it was going it, to be. It is. It's a bit boomy at these revs. You a can bit, really yeah. feel it, you know. And, it, and, and you're right about the steering, it's so precise. It is so precise. It does feel like a mid engine car. The brakes are actually really good. Yeah, they are. You don't have to, I mean, I'm, obviously, I felt that from the passenger seat, but you don't have to really lean on the brakes no, to get you don't. it to, you to don't. slow down. But when I really did lean on them, I really did lean on them, right? Well, yeah, I could feel it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can drive it very, I mean, I'm yeah. going, the, the gear shift I'm completely used to now, that is very precise. It feels yeah. like. It, well, it feels like a sports car, doesn't it? It, it feels does. very notchy it's, and mechanical. It's direct and there's not much slop in it. So. Nothing at all. I wanted to take it easy, let that temperature come down a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. And I appreciate you taking care of my car. I do. <laughs> I, well, I've got uh, nothing but mechanical sympathy for... No, Experience, actually mine and Andrew's experience uh, of driving the Renault 5 Turbo 2. Hey! There we go, I got it. One of three ain't bad. So anyway, no, I had a fantastic, fantastic day driving this today. What an experience it is to drive a road going version of a rally car from the 80s. You don't get something this unique anymore. Stuff like this isn't built the way this has been built. It was great fun to drive. It starts, drives, steers and stops better than I expected. It actually goes really, really well. But what we're actually looking forward to is part two of this feature. If you want to see that or see more of what we're doing, like the, like the page, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell, please. Let people know what we're doing because we've got some other fantastic stuff coming like this.